Bunun kanda yadının umutasını tartatın bu uçuk. Bir de münafsa bir yerip, yani tülkü alğanın görüp, bambuzun gönün görüp, süt türgünün gönün, o da zağabı, su tartatı, su tartatı, su I guess you get a really good job. Oh, do you get into like showing this to tourists? Yeah, yeah this is a really good job. It's like a, you know, like a, in summertime from June to October, we uh -huh. explain, especially about the, like nomadic life in yeah. Mongolia. Yeah. And our country is like undiscovered country. <laughs> Thousands of years of yeah. tradition we still practicing yeah. in real life. Yeah. It's going it's going really well. So um so over the course of the last year I actually um kind of transferred a lot of the power and responsibility to other people in my company uh, to let them grow. Yeah. And to me actually learning about um the problems of other countries mm -hmm. gives me also the opportunity to think about new ideas or new companies or what to do next. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's saying, uh, yeah, help us. Yeah, also, do you want to be like creative, successful? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I think you have great pictures of, uh, and you could do, you could do a wonderful website. Yeah, I'm really sure. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm trying to create a website myself, okay. so I have been exploring from the Google. I have like a four world adventure tours, yes. and cultural family tours, eagle tours, festivals, yep. like eagle festival, and trekking tours, mm -hmm. and winter tours. All right. And um, so, when speaking about your website, um, I think you, like that's your main channel to to gain no, new customers, right? Of course, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, like when I when I look at like the idea of your website, I think it's super super important to have great photos because great photos, yeah. Um, because like you're showing me, showing me around and it's like this great landscape here, and I think really the point is 
to get that feeling across. And the other thing that I think is really important is kind of that people can trust you, right? So like put yourself out there as the guide, the face, and be the person you're gonna be contacting, mm -hmm. and he takes care of everything, and then um, it's you. And I, I would say, think about yourself as a brand. I have been thinking for many years to start and to open my own company. And from last year, I made this decision. And I felt that it is time to start. And I like to present my nation, my tradition to the world because all like Mongolia is undiscovered, especially Western Mongolia. People don't know about Western Mongolia. So in five years, in 10 years, when I get more tourists, people more know about our culture and our tradition. So that is the, my aim, my vision, and that is the, what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, so when they go for hunting, mm -hmm. they just hold eagle like this for hours and hours. For hours and hours. Yeah, for hours and hours. So you've been running your company now for a year? Yeah, for a year, yes. And um, if I look back to my first year, it was kind of hard to survive from, from the first earnings. Like, how is it for you? Is it, is it working? First year, when I launched my website, I think after three months, a person from Australia contacted me, right. and I was so happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he decided to come here. Uh, yeah. So I didn't charge him because he was. Yeah, happy. I, I charged it only for the like driver, <laughs> only for the fuel, and I told him, okay. How much you like to give me? Just give me. <laughs> and what? Yeah, so I, I dropped him to the Sambagarp mountain uh -huh. for a few days and I, we took him to the this highest peaks in Mongolia, the Stavonburg National Park. Yeah, that was like happiest moment. Yeah. yeah. So good so memories for, for yeah, the for, first customer, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, first customer, yes. <laughs> ich glaube schon, dass es ähm, schwierig ist, hier zu gründen. Ne? Du hast halt nicht nicht das Setup, was du vielleicht in Hamburg hättest und nicht die Stabilität vielleicht. Auf der anderen Seite, vielleicht hat man auch hier weniger die Chance, äh, sondern man muss gründen, einfach um auch einen Job zu haben. Und ich glaube, da darf man zwei Sachen nicht, nicht vertauschen. Also es gibt viele Leute, die sind in einer glücklichen Person, äh, Position, die können gründen, um sich selbst einen Traum zu erfüllen. Manche Leute müssen vielleicht auch einfach gründen, um einfach Geld zu verdienen. Und ich glaube, das ist Das kann man nicht immer vergleichen. Aus beiden können großartige Sachen entstehen, aber die Motivation ist manchmal ein bisschen eine andere. So, um, next photo is going to be hard for me. <laughs> That's us. Our founding photo of the first company when we were 16. Um, we moved in here. So that's where I'm born, that's where I'm coming from. It's in northern Germany. Um, and we literally had no money at all in the beginning. And this is Jim Lunau. <laughs> so we're 200 people and people from all over the country. And we also got an office in Tokyo. It has been grown quite a, quite a bit. And um, you're gonna learn a lot. But what I really think is 
super, super important is pick a topic you really are passionate about. Because you're going to stick to this for a long time, and if it's something you don't really like, then it's hard to keep on pressing. Like, pick something you're really passionate about and follow it, because you're going to fail a lot. Well, that's all right. OK. One, two, three. Hey! <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for your presentation. Do you want to ask some questions? Yes, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah. So, uh, the future vision. Yeah. And how do you plan it? Um, so to me, it was never so much a problem. We don't have uh, the community like uh, e-commerce culture in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> die Chance, Mitgründer zu finden, zum Beispiel, die das Gleiche wollen und auch Lust haben, das zu machen. Davon gibt es, glaube ich, noch nicht so viel. Das ist ein bisschen mein Eindruck, auch bei dem, bei dem Startup-Event -Event hier. Also, du hast drei Millionen Einwohner und die Hälfte lebt hier. Ähm, das heißt, du hast auf der einen Seite eine Stadt, die ist total groß, und dann hast du halt den Rest, ein riesiges Land, wo eigentlich wenig Leute leben. Und ähm, ich glaube, wir müssen es halt schaffen, hier etwas zu bauen, was halt auch schnell in einem anderen Markt funktionieren kann so schnell einfach expandieren kannst. Ich glaube, ich möchte einfach besser verstehen, wie die Welt auch an anderen Orten tickt und ähm, welche Sachen anders sind als in Deutschland. Ähm, und auch sehen, wie andere Leute es in anderen Ländern schaffen. Und darüber zu lernen und wirklich neugierig zu sein und in Verbindung zu treten mit den Leuten, das ist das, was ich möchte. My vision is to create a brand that will eventually, maybe not now, but in 50 or 100 years, will be known internationally so that if the next generation tells to somebody in Asia or America or Europe, I'm from Mongolia, that yeah. somebody can say, oh, I know the brand Lamor. Um, so the Mongolian market is probably not so big, or is it? It's very small. Yeah. yeah. The active workforce, apparently, according to statistics, is uh, 800,000. Yeah. Well, it's really and little. Yeah, it's very little. So um, we need to go global. Mm -hmm. We have to in order to be sustainable in the long term. So that was kind of no question for you, like. Yeah. The vision was from the start to create a brand and a product that can be acknowledged and recognized anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. So that's why we used English label combined with Mongolian labels from the start. So basically a combination of Lamo, uh -huh. which is the name of my niece. It's all unique, so you can never find this hope again. <laughs> <laughs> and then I put it like all together myself. Uh, and these are all hand drawn. Oh, wow. yeah. nice. yeah. And I just put it on my Facebook. I was like, is there any painter or artist that can help me with the design? And he said, okay, I, I will do it. And then he all drew it by hand. Our company, especially with regard to the ingredients, really focuses on having fresh ingredients. Yes. For the soaps especially, we have here this, uh -huh. because it's a natural soap. Yeah. One soap has to cure for two months. Oh, okay. It's almost like cheese making. Yeah, okay. So it, it has, has to, to breathe, breathe. Mm -hmm. exactly. The challenge I'm facing is how to keep the momentum and, and grow in a sustainable way. We don't want to be that overnight success that eventually faded away and, and disappeared. Once you have a team, mm -hmm. your, your dream of all these like bubbly yeah. sky cloud things turn into reality because then you have to think about how to keep your salary constant and how to always every month give your salary because you know that people depend on you and you know that these people have have families 
So I think the more you grow, the more fears you have, and those fears are on an even larger scale. Ich glaube, es ist total gut, jemanden zu haben wie sie, die einfach beweist, dass man überhaupt erst mal dahin kommen kann, wo sie jetzt steht. Und das ist super. Diese gesamte Gesellschaft ist halt sehr auf Large-Scale Mining und die ganzen Sachen ausgerichtet. Ich glaube, es geht darum zu zeigen, dass man halt auch mit dem, was sie macht und potenziell was andere machen, zu zeigen, dass das halt auch ein Industriezweig werden kann, auf dem die Wirtschaft aus der Mongolei fußt. Die Wirtschaft hier zu verstehen, ist es total wichtig, die Mining-Industrie zu verstehen, weil es halt einfach die größte treibende Kraft ist. Und, ähm, und es zeigt halt die Abhängigkeit auf von den Ressourcen und vor, auch natürlich von dem Weltmarkt und den Weltmarktpreisen. Es ist schon schwer, was anderes zu machen. Also, das Gefühl, was ich entwickelt habe, nachdem ich mit vielen Gründern gesprochen habe, ist, dass die Regierung sich einfach auch hauptsächlich um die Meinungsindustrie kümmert ne? und neue Lizenzen vergibt, immer mehr von dem Gleichen. Und die jungen Gründer fühlen sich nicht gehört, die fühlen sich nicht gesehen und ähm, haben auch nicht das Gefühl, dass ihren Ideen wirklich zugehört wird. You have met some some of these startups. Yeah, I did. So hopefully, these young people will change the speed and the path of the country. What is your opinion on that? Innovation always comes from understanding problems. Like if you don't got the problem right, you never can think about how to do an innovation to solve it. And if you understand them, then actually that's the basement for running a company. I think. What do you see? The people, young entrepreneurs, should have strength, character mm -hmm. to deal with. So I think it's not a really stable environment and you can't rely on so many things. And um, the person I've met so far, they just deal with all these circumstances and they don't complain, right? They just go forward and they have the will to create something to, to make Mongolia a better country. What from your perspective mm -hmm. is something that keeps us keeping that identity yet being global? Because there's a demand of time. Because of the nomadic culture, lots of people are used to change. Because um, you don't stick to one place, you kind of moving around. And I think that's probably a good thing because you can adapt really quick and kind of adapt to, to new situations. Maybe that's going to play in your favor. Thank you very much for coming to this program. Thank you. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Mm -hmm. yeah, it is. It is. So globalization is there, no choice, no, no option. Now, what we shall do, what advantage we can take out of it, an issue. So, uh, now everybody understands that. And everybody in Mongolia is paying more attention to education, particular quality education. Those who can pay, they send children abroad to more developed Western countries. Mongolians study, you will be surprised, they study everywhere. And Mongolians, also you will be surprised, for three million people, They are everywhere. <laughs> I haven't lived here for 20 years, but there's always something that like draws me back. And I think especially with the countryside, it has just this magical, special energy that, that kind of pulls you back. 
My former CEO actually uh, wrote to me and asked me if I want to come uh, back to Mongolia and work for um, the renewable energy. So that's the wind farm over there, the first ever wind farm of Mongolia. Yeah. In one of the most windiest areas. <laughs> and it's uh, currently f up and running fully. And <laughs> it's up and running fully. And there's a lot of construction in that area yeah. going on. So um, it generates 5% of Mongolia's energy. That sounds exciting, like being like running one of the first projects in Mongolia is a huge change, isn't it? Yeah, so um, I guess it was a dilemma of if I want to stay in New York mm -hmm. and get experience and get a good job and, and get good salary or if I want to be part of something that's new and that's good for Mongolia. Mm -hmm. So I we'll guess, see. yeah, I didn't, I, I thought about it, but then within one week I just felt like it's better to be a change maker and, and, and impact maker than to, to try and like, you know, uh, work for companies in the States that already have everything. It's funny, it's so common in Germany to have these things. Yeah. It's like no, not a big deal, but here it, it, it's, it's a sign of transformation. Yeah, yeah exactly. Have you seen them um, constructing anything? Yes, so I was here when the last blade was um, erected and uh, assembled. And then the funny thing with the wind farm is you need all the wind for it to work. Yep. But then when you actually construct it and, have, uh, and move the blade up, yep. you don't want any wind. <laughs> right. So let there be no wind. <laughs> <laughs> Please die, wind. Please die. Exactly. <laughs> So you've been studying so long, being abroad, gaining lots of experience in this sector here. Um, why, why did you kind of kick that and was going in a complete different direction, cosmetics? I have started because of my own skin problems. Um, and I think every entrepreneur um, usually has a problem that they see and that they want to fix. So the problem was how to have healthy skin with all this extreme negative um, external effects such as extreme climate, dry weather condition and pollution. For us, financing and having like a really good team that really helps us go global is for me currently the biggest challenge. Um, every other challenge, like regulation and the country and the economic crisis, I, I don't really see it as a challenge anymore. Okay. Just because I see it as a lesson that needs to be learned. And I always check, okay, lesson learned, check, let's move on. Because if you think about all the small problems on a daily basis, you cannot be a visionary person anymore. The startup scene in per se, würde ich sagen, ja, ist sehr globalisiert, weil das, was ich lerne und die Beispiele, von denen ich lerne und da macht man gar nicht so einen großen Unterschied zwischen Ländern, sondern man probiert ja gerade das Wissen sich da herzuholen, wo es, wo es am frischesten ist oder am besten ist. Das ist auch spannend, jetzt unterwegs zu sein und Gründer zu treffen oder zum Beispiel Kulan zu treffen. Die Denkweise ist dann doch sehr ähnlich. So, obwohl die Leute aus ganz unterschiedlichen kulturellen Hintergründen kommen, merkst du, dass die Denkweise, wie man Probleme löst und dass man sich nicht so leicht erschüttern lässt und immer wieder probiert, wie man weiterkommt, 
dass genau diese Sachen gleich sind, egal woher die Leute kommen. Und das ist toll, das finde ich großartig. <lacht>